How fast can birds fly? There is great variation in flight speeds among the nearly 8,000 species of birds. Small songbirds like wrens and sparrows fly 10 to 20 miles, 16 to 32 kilometers, per hour. While ducks, geese, and pigeons can fly at speeds up to 60 miles, 97 kilometers, per hour. Some birds, like the peregrine falcon and golden eagle, have been timed diving at speeds exceeding 170 miles, 274 kilometers, per hour. Scientists have had a hard time measuring how fast a bird can fly. Due in part to the variable effects of wind. A strong wind at a bird's back can help it fly much faster. While flying directly into a wind can slow the bird down considerably. What does it mean to play possum? The opossum, whose name is frequently shortened to possum, is a small animal that spends a lot of its time in trees looking for food, insects, fruit, small birds, or mammals, and eggs. Its teeth and sharp claws help it get the food it needs. But in a contest with a larger predator, the opossum doesn't have many defenses. It does have one fairly effective trick, however, if an opossum is caught off guard on the ground by a potential enemy. It might pretend to be dead so the predator will leave it alone. Sometimes this works for the possum, and sometimes it doesn't. This behavior gave rise to the expression play possum. Which means to pretend to be sleeping or dead to avoid trouble. It can also generally refer to deceptive or dishonest behavior. If I eat too much food will I get fat? Your body needs food to provide it with the energy it needs to run smoothly and to grow and repair itself. All of this requires calories, which is a measurement of energy. Food provides the calories that make the body run. The amount of calories that a person needs depends a lot on how active he or she is and on whether that individual is still growing. Even though they are smaller than adults, children need comparatively more calories. Because they are so physically active and are always making new body tissue as they grow. If you eat a lot more calories than your body needs for the energy you use each day. Your body will store the extra calories as fat. Having a lot of body fat greatly increases your chances of getting a lot of different diseases. The easiest way to guard against being overweight is to lead a physically active life. Keeping fit through regular exercise like bicycling, swimming, or participating in team sports like basketball will burn up the calories you eat, keeping you trim. Regular exercise also keeps joints and muscles flexible and strong and the heart and lungs healthy. Exercise seems to make the brain work better, too. In order to lose weight, you have to eat less and exercise more. 
if you burn more calories than the amount you take in through food each day. Your body will use your stored fat for the energy it needs, and you will lose weight. Increasing your physical activities is one way to accomplish this, another way is to change your diet. By not eating junk food food and drink that are high in fat and sugar but have few of the nutrients that your body needs you will be able to reduce the calories that you take in. Concentrating on foods that are good for you. But remember, the object of dieting is good health, not skinniness. People who make themselves too thin by not eating enough can have very serious health problems. Why are animals sometimes kept in cages at zoos? For many decades, most zoo animals were exhibited in cages with bars. It was a way to allow zoo visitors a good view of the animals while keeping people safe from unexpected attacks. Cages also kept animals in small areas, which was economical saving the zoo money and they were made of hard materials that could be hosed down, making them easy to keep clean. While cages are still used at zoos today, it is not often that an animal is kept in one all the time. Zoologists now realize that it is unhealthy and even cruel for an animal to always be confined to a cage where it cannot get the exercise it would ordinarily get in the wild. In recent years, Many zoos have built large enclosures for zoo animals that resemble the creature's own natural habitats. While zoo visitors may not be able to look as closely at an animal in such enclosures where a creature can hide in caves or trees the accommodations are much better for the animal which can now exhibit more natural behavior. What are the reflectors on my bicycle for? Reflectors help protect you when you are riding your bicycle in the dark. When a car approaches you the light waves produced by its headlights hit. Your reflectors and bounce back into the eyes of the driver making him or her aware of where you are and helping that person drive past you carefully. Reflectors are located at the front and back of your bike, as well as on your pedals. That way you can be seen regardless of the direction in which you are heading. Reflectors are usually made of hard colored plastic with a backing of reflective material. The inner surface of the plastic is cut into many tiny angles. Kind of like the sides, or facets, of a diamond. These bounce light waves around inside before they are reflected away. Which explains why reflectors are so startlingly bright. When you ride your bike at night it is also a good idea to wear reflective clothing with strips of material or tape attached that bounce back light. Light-colored clothing will also make you more visible. And if you have to bicycle in the street, travel along the right side of the road, in the same direction that traffic goes. Be especially careful when cars approach.
because their drivers may still not see you, despite your reflectors. What are the cloudy streaks that airplanes sometimes make in the sky? When an aircraft flies very high in the sky where the air is cold the water vapor from the hot exhaust of its engines condenses, leaving a trail of clouds behind, called contrails. These streaks are not the same as skywriting, when pilots use airplanes to write messages in the air. For skywriting, a special machine on a plane creates and blows out white smoke to form letters. A pilot can only skywrite on clear, non-windy days. How do boa constrictors kill their prey? Injecting animals with venom is not the only method used by snakes to control their prey. One group of snakes, called the constrictors, do not produce venom but are every bit as deadly to the animals they hunt. The constrictors, including boa constrictors and pythons, use the powerful muscles in their bodies to squeeze the life out of their prey. They coil themselves around the animal they've caught, squeezing until its blood can no longer circulate. Boa constrictors eat mostly birds and mice, and they can grow to be around 14 feet, 4.3 meters, long. The female boa is among the few snakes whose young develop within her body. She gives birth to live snakes, perhaps as many as 50 at one time. Pythons, which live in parts of Asia, Africa and Australia, are among the biggest snakes in the world. With the larger species getting as long as 30 feet, 9 meters. How does a lie detector work? Lie detectors, or polygraphs, have been featured in countless police dramas on television and in the movies. And they are usually portrayed as foolproof methods of determining whether a person accused of a crime is lying or telling the truth. A person taking a polygraph is hooked up to several sensors that measure things like heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate, and perspiration, or sweat. The results measured by the sensors are recorded as jagged lines. On a piece of paper that moves through the polygraph machine. The tester begins by asking the subject questions he or she knows the answers to. Like the subject's name, the day of the week, or the color of an article of clothing. From the answers to these questions the tester can see what. The subject's normal heart and breathing rates look like. Then the tester begins to ask the serious questions about the crime that was committed, for example. The idea is that if a person is lying, his or her heart will beat faster and he or she will sweat more. And these changes will be recorded as higher peaks in the jagged lines. Many people believe that an experienced reader of polygraph tests can accurately tell if the person being tested has lied. 
Others insist that such tests are highly inaccurate and easy to beat for those who know how. How does a refrigerator keep food cold? When a liquid evaporates, or changes into a gas, it absorbs heat from the things around it. That principle explains why you feel cooler when you sweat. The liquid perspiration removes body heat as it evaporates into the air. The opposite occurs a gas gives off heat when it changes into a liquid. These two principles are used in most refrigeration systems. Refrigerators are cooled by a special fluid. Refrigerant, that is easily changed into a gas or vapor and then back into a liquid again. Compressing the refrigerant, squeezing it into a smaller space than it would normally occupy. Makes it take on its liquid form, and it is pumped through evaporator tubes inside a refrigerator. As it changes back to a gas there. It absorbs heat from the food and air inside, cooling the refrigerator's interior. The warmed vapor is pumped outside the refrigerator, by a compressor. And through condenser tubes, where it releases heat into the air as it turns into a liquid again. That heat is the warm air you feel at the back or bottom of a refrigerator. The cycle continues as the refrigerant travels in and out, carrying heat away and keeping food cold. A thermostat set at a certain temperature turns an electric motor on and off. The motor circulates the refrigerant, keeping the right amount of coolness inside the refrigerator. Air conditioners work in a similar way. What is an ant? An ant is the sister of your mother or father. She can also be the woman who marries your mother or father's brother. If your mother and father have many brothers and sisters, you can have a lot of ants. Sometimes a woman who is not related to you but who helps, advises. And encourages you as an ant would is affectionately referred to as your aunt. What should I do if another kid is being a bully? If you're on a playground and you see a kid hurting or making fun of another kid, your first impulse might be to turn around and pretend you didn't see it. But imagine how that bullied kid is feeling. And you'll know that the right thing to do is to try to put a stop to it. Sometimes, if the bully is a bigger kid and is being rough, the best thing to do is to find a teacher or another adult and tell that person what's going on. Or, if the situation doesn't feel like it could threaten your personal safety. The best thing you can do is to stand up for the kid being bullied. Kids who make fun of others usually expect to get a laugh from their friends. And if you show the bully that his or her teasing isn't funny and that. You support the person being teased it could end the teasing right there. Lots of kids have been picked on by a bully, for many different reasons. 
if you've been the target of a bully. You know it can be very scary and upsetting to be teased, hit, or threatened. Sometimes it helps to simply ignore what the bully is saying. Most bullies do what they do to get a reaction from those they tease. And if they get no reaction at all, it's a lot less fun for them. It usually helps to have friends around, too. A kid walking alone is more vulnerable than a group of kids, and if you are bullied when your friends are with you. It might help you feel brave enough to stand up to the bully. Even if you don't feel that confident, sometimes just acting confident can go a long way. If you hold your head high and tell a bully to stop calling you names. You may just surprise that bully into silence. One approach to avoid is responding to bullying with violence. It will probably only make matters worse. Even though it may feel awkward or embarrassing. It might help to tell your parents or a teacher what you're going through. At the very least, they can make you feel better by explaining why bullies behave the way they do. And by reassuring you that what the bully says about you has nothing to do with who you really are. And at the most, adults can help keep you safe if you're being threatened. Who decides which of the divorced parents their children will live with? Because a marriage is a legal partnership, its dissolution, or end, takes place by a judgment of a court. The court, then, awards custody of children after a divorce. The judge that presides over the court makes this decision. Ideally keeping the best interests of the children in mind. A judge's involvement is especially important when parents can't agree over. Who should be the main caregiver for their children and provide their main home. But in the best cases, both parents and children decide together how they would like custody to be awarded. And they let the court know their preferences. Sometimes joint custody is the solution, which means that the parents share responsibility for the kids. And the children divide their time equally between their mother and father and their separate homes. Most of the time, however, one parent becomes the custodial parent and the children live with her or him. While the other parent has visitation rights. Which means that he or she can see the children at certain times, like on weekends or during summer vacations. Why are men's and women's bicycles built differently? The crossbars on bicycle frames give them added strength. On a man's or boy's bike the crossbar extends straight across the top of the frame, just below the seat. On a woman's or girl's bike the crossbar is attached to the seat tube at an angle, far below the seat. Because of this structure, women's bikes are not nearly as sturdy as men's bikes. When bicycles were first built, women didn't wear pants, they always wore skirts or dresses. The low crossbars on their bikes allowed them to get on ride, and get off with dignity without showing their underwear. 
the design of bicycles for women and girls, then, is based on a long-standing tradition and still offers the advantage of easier mounting and dismounting. But today, women and girl bicyclists wear pants or shorts. When riding and can easily use bikes designed for men. As a matter of fact, serious female bicyclists who do a lot of riding or travel. Through tough terrain and need bikes with sturdier frames by those made for men. Why do people have to grow old? Growing old is part of being a living thing. Every plant and animal must go through a cycle of life that involves a beginning, a middle, and an end. Actually, as soon as we are born we begin aging or growing older. But when we talk of growing old we think of the physical changes that occur when bodies cannot grow and repair themselves as they once did. At about age 30 the signs of aging start to appear. Though for most people the physical changes aren't really obvious until many years later. As people age, skin may begin to sag and wrinkle, and hair may turn thin or gray. Over time muscles become less strong and flexible, and bones may become more brittle and breakable. Blood may not flow through the body as well as it once did. Which slows the activity of the brain and the senses. The immune system becomes weaker and does not fight off sickness as well as before. People experience these changes at different ages. But all will grow old as they near the end of their life cycle. It may seem sad that a person has grown old and cannot do all the things they once did. But try to look at it this way, when people grow old. That means they have been lucky enough to avoid things like accidents and diseases that could have cut their lives short. And better yet, regardless of the physical changes of old age. Many people remain healthy and lead full and happy lives. Why do metal things feel cold? When heat is transferred from one material to another it is called conduction. Metal is a good conductor of heat, while nonmetals like wood and plastic are poor conductors. The temperature of any metal object in a room is about the same as the air that surrounds it. Your body, on the other hand, has its own internal furnace. Which keeps it running at a temperature of about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius. When you touch a metal object that's surrounded by air cooler than your body. The object quickly conducts heat away from your fingertips, which makes them feel cold. The sensation travels to your brain, which perceives that the metal object is cold. If you hold a small metal object, like a penny, in your hand for a long time. It will absorb enough of your body heat to feel as warm as you are. The opposite is also true, if you touch the hood of a car that's been sitting in a sunny driveway on a warm day. The metal will conduct heat to your fingertips, and the hood will feel hot to you.
Why are there traffic lights? Traffic lights were invented to control the safe flow of traffic on streets. They came into widespread use after the invention of the automobile. Until then, people generally didn't require formal traffic rules and control devices. Relying instead on polite behavior and common sense when they traveled. But when fast and noisy motor vehicles began to fill the streets, it became clear that traffic control was needed. Lights that stopped some drivers, while allowing others to proceed, was one way to protect both cars and pedestrians, people on foot, from collisions and to avoid traffic buildups. The first traffic light was erected in 1868 in downtown London, England. This redand green tinted gas lantern, hung on a tall iron pole, could be turned in one direction or another by a handle at its base. Of course, at the time, automobiles had not yet been invented. But the number of steam engine vehicles, animal drawn wagons, and carriages, and pedestrians had become so plentiful at the busy corner. At Parliament Square, that a traffic light was needed to prevent accidents. The electric traffic signal was invented by Garrett Morgan, an African American businessman and inventor, in Cleveland, Ohio. After buying his first automobile, Morgan realized the need for some traffic control at intersections. He invented a traffic light based on the signals used at railroad crossings, he received a patent for it. That is, he registered the invention as his with the government. In 1923, some early traffic signals had red and green lights and a warning buzzer that sounded as the color changed. But as automobile traffic and noise increased, people thought that a visual warning between going and stopping would work better than one that was heard. An amber or yellow light was added to traffic signals to warn drivers to prepare to stop. How do mountains and valleys form? A mountain is an area of high ground that rises 1,000 feet, 305 meters, or more above its surroundings. A group of mountains is called a mountain range. Almost all mountains and valleys the depressions between separate mountains or mountain peaks are formed when the huge moving plates of rock that make up Earth's crust collide with one another, which forces their edges to break and rise and fold, eventually creating a rising land mass. The process is a slow one, though, taking place over millions of years. It is also continuous, with new mountains being formed all the time. The age of a mountain can often be determined by its size and shape. Newer mountains are high and jagged, while older ones which have been eroded or worn down by wind and weather over millions of years are smoother and lower. The movement of rivers or glaciers, large masses of ice on land through mountains can also create valleys by slowly wearing rock away
How do birds fly? Birds have one major feature that distinguishes them from all other animals, feathers. These strong but lightweight feathers, in combination with the structure of their bodies. Allow birds to fly with amazing skill and speed. Many birds have hollow bones, making their bodies very lightweight. And the muscles that move their wings are extremely powerful. Birds fly, basically, by flapping their wings and using their tails to steer. A bird's wing is a very complicated instrument that can be adjusted in many different ways to control the flight's speed, angle, height, and direction. The wider base of the wing, the part closer to the bird's body, gives it support. While the tip of the wing propels the bird forward. The way the bird's body is built. Particularly the shape and structure of the wing, determines the way the bird flies. Some fly at high altitudes, while others stay low to the ground. Some fly quickly with small, rapid wing movements, others flap their wings slowly but powerfully. A better question would be, how do plants make their own food? Green plants get nourishment through a chemical process called photosynthesis, which uses sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to make simple sugars. Those simple sugars are then changed into starches, proteins, or fats, which provide a plant with all the energy it needs to perform life processes and to grow. Generally, sunlight, along with carbon dioxide, enters through the surface of a plant's leaves. The sunlight and carbon dioxide travel to special food-making cells, palisade, deeper in the leaves. Each of these cells contain a green substance called chlorophyll which gives plants. Their green color that traps light energy, allowing food making to take place. Also located in the middle layer of leaves are special cells that make up a plant's transportation systems. Tube-like bundles of cells called xylem tissue carry water and minerals throughout a plant, from its roots to its outermost leaves. Phloem cells, on the other hand, transport the plant's food supply sugar. Dissolved in water from its manufacturing site in leaves to all other cells. The plant food that we buy in stores is simply a mixture of minerals that plants need to grow well. These include nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Usually a plant is able to get these things from the soil in which it grows. Drawing them up with water through its roots. But gardeners, farmers, and other plant growers add to this natural mineral supply so plants can thrive. Why do I have to wear sunscreen? If you are going to be out in the sun for a long time you need to wear a sunscreen or sunblock. These lotions contain chemicals that absorb certain harmful rays of the sun. Ultraviolet rays, keeping them from penetrating your skin. 
This protection is important because these rays can hurt you. Causing painful sunburns that damage the tissues beneath the surface of your skin. Damaging your skin's deep elastic layer makes it look old and wrinkled a lot earlier than it should. But the most important thing to avoid when you're out in the sun is cell damage that causes skin cancer. Doctors have found that being in strong sunlight a lot, especially if you are fair. And having many sunburns particularly when you are young can cause real problems many years later. Skin cancers can develop and, when not treated quickly, spread to other parts of the body and be extremely dangerous. Because sunscreens can't protect you from all of the sun's harmful rays. It is also wise to use clothing, hats, and sunglasses to cover up when sunlight is strong. In addition, it is a good idea to limit outdoor activities between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. When the rays of the sun are most intense. What do farmers do in the winter? Some farmers are lucky enough to live in places where the winters are mild and crops can be grown throughout the year. But many farmers live in regions where the winters are cold and snowy. During which time crops can't be grown. In such places, farmers usually plant crops in the spring. Tend to them all summer long, and harvest them in the fall. The winter gives farmers the opportunity to do some things they may not have had time for during the busy growing and harvesting seasons. They can work on their barns or homes, repair their tractors and other machinery. And work out a plan for the following year's crops. Some farmers spend time in the winter promoting and publicizing the products they grow and sell. Many farmers find a second job off the farm during the winter to bring in some extra money. For farmers with lots of animals, or livestock, the work continues right through the winter. The animals must be fed and their pens must be cleaned. Eggs must be gathered from chicken coops and dairy cows need to be milked several times a day. Field work may be suspended for a few months during the winter, but livestock farmers keep busy year-round. What is a pimple? Almost every part of your body is covered with hair, most of it so fine that it is invisible. Hair grows from tiny holes in the skin called follicles, which also contain glands. These sebaceous, sebaceous glands produce oils that make the surface of your skin soft and flexible and keep it from drying out. Sometimes a gland makes too much oil, though, and that extra oil becomes trapped in its follicle. At that point bacteria which are always present on the skin may infect the blocked follicle. As your body tries to fight the infection, redness, swelling, and pus may appear at the spot, causing what we know as a pimple. Usually squeezing and picking at a pimple only spreads the tiny infection into surrounding tissue. Making the problem worse. 
Pimples that are very infected may take many weeks to heal and leave small scars in the skin. Usually when girls and boys, especially boys, become adolescents, they start to have trouble with pimples. Pimples flare up at this time because certain hormones chemicals made by glands that control different body processes increase as kids approach sexual maturity. Some of those hormones increase the production of oil in the skin. When a person has a lot of pimples, over a long period of time, the condition is called acne. The best thing to do for acne is to keep your skin clean, washing with soap twice a day. If it gets too bad, a dermatologist, or skin doctor, can help. Just try to remember that your acne is normal, it won't last forever. And it is probably more noticeable to you than to anyone else. What is smog? Smog, which originally was named by combining the words smoke and fog, is a type of air pollution. Smog was so named because it can form when moisture in the air combines with smoke particles. The smoke particles come from factories burning coal. This kind of smog has been a problem in London and other cities in Great Britain. Another kind of smog, called photochemical smog, is generally what people mean when they refer to this kind of pollution. Photochemical smog occurs when sunlight combines with the fumes from cars and factories in big cities. This combination produces a chemical reaction, resulting in gases called oxidants. When the weather conditions are right very little wind or a layer of warm air settling on top of a layer of cool air smog can accumulate and hover in the air. The Los Angeles, California area is especially famous for its high levels of smog. The conditions are ripe for a smog problem in Los Angeles, there are a lot of cars. Producing a great deal of exhaust, the city is located in a valley, where smog tends to accumulate. And it is surrounded by mountains, which means little wind gets in to break up the smog. The oxidants produced in photochemical smog pollute the air. Damage plant life, and, in extreme cases, causes people to get sick. It has even been responsible for deaths. Over a four-day period in 1952, the smog in London became so heavy and thick that people could barely see what was in front of them. By the end of that period, 4,000 people had died from lung ailments produced by the toxic chemicals. In the United States, in the town of Donora, Pennsylvania. 20 people died and thousands more became sick when smog levels reached a dangerous high. Laws attempting to reduce levels of air pollution have made some improvements. But the huge number of cars, factories, and power plants in industrialized Nations like the United States continue to produce high levels of air pollution. Can anything live in a desert? Lance have developed surprising adaptations to allow them to live in the harsh, 
dry desert. Many, like cacti, store water in their fleshy stems and have small or no leaves through which water can escape. They have deep, spreading root systems that take advantage of every bit of water. Either above or below the ground, some extending down 50 feet. Other desert plants produce seeds that can lie dormant or inactive for years. Springing to life when the rare rainstorm comes. Animals, too, have developed habits allowing them to survive in the desert. Many, for example, rest during the hottest part of the day in burrows dug in rocks or sand. Becoming active in the early morning and at night when temperatures cool. And people have had a long history of successfully living in the desert, the ancient Egyptians. Who lived in the Sahara Desert along the Nile River, created one of Earth's great civilizations. A source of water in a desert, like a river or an oasis where underground water reaches. The surface can be used to water crops and feed livestock, and life can flourish around it. Why do we have leap years? Calendars are fairly fixed things. Each year has the same number of months and days. And the days follow a seven-day rotation going from Sunday to Saturday. But the movements of Earth do not conform exactly to the time designations humans have imposed. For example, the calendar used in much of the world, the Gregorian calendar, says that a year has 365 days. In fact, it takes Earth about 365.25 days to go around the Sun. That extra one quarter day must be accounted for in the calendar or eventually, the calendar and the seasons of the year would no longer be aligned. To correct this problem, an extra day is added to the calendar every four years. In such years, called leap years, February has one extra day, or 29 days. When the Gregorian calendar was devised, astronomers realized that even adjusting the calendar to add one day every four years would still not make it match exactly the movements of Earth. So they decreed that when that fourth year falls in a century year, one with two zeros at the end. That is not divisible by 400, like 1700 or 1900, there would not be an extra day. What is a vegetarian? A vegetarian is a person that does not eat any animal flesh, including meat, poultry, or seafood. A vegetarian diet can consist of fruits, vegetables, breads, nuts, and pasta as well as dairy products like cheese and milk. Some vegetarians, known as vegans, vegans, do not eat anything produced by an animal. So they eliminate all dairy and products made with eggs from their diets as well. Vegetarians have existed since ancient times. When certain religious or ethnic groups advocated the special diet for religious reasons or health concerns. Or on moral grounds, 
believing that killing any living creature for food was wrong. The reasons people choose to be vegetarians today are much the same as they once were. With health concerns playing a large role. Many people believe that a vegetarian diet rich in fiber and low in fat. As opposed to the higher fat quantities found in meat heavy diets reduces the risk of heart disease and some forms of cancer. Are all snakes poisonous? Snakes are among the most frightening animals to humans, and because of this fear many people would sooner try to destroy these animals than understand their benefits to the environment. Snakes are beneficial in that they eat pest insects and rodents. Helping to control the populations of animals that can be nuisances to humans. Only about one-tenth of all snakes are venomous. And not all of the venomous snakes are dangerous, or even deadly, to humans. Most snakes are completely harmless. And poisonous snakes do not hunt people. They bite when they are handled, stepped on, or otherwise disturbed. Their venom is most often used on their prey, not on people. There are about 20 species of poisonous snakes in the United States. Mostly rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, also called water moccasins, coral snakes, and copperheads. Many venomous snakes, with coral snakes as one exception are categorized as pit vipers because they have pits on their heads between their eyes and nostrils. These pits help the snakes detect heat, making it easier for them to locate prey. Most venomous snake bites are treatable and don't result in any lasting problems. The deaths that do occur from snake venom frequently happen because the person was unable to get to a hospital soon enough. If a snake bite occurs, try to get to a hospital as soon as possible. In the meantime, a bandage can be wrapped lightly around the area just above the bite. And the limb where the bite occurred should be moved as little as possible. What happens when people die? When death occurs, blood which carries oxygen to all the cells of the body has stopped circulating. This stoppage may be caused by damage to the heart, which is the muscle that pumps blood throughout the body. Or by damage to the brain, which gives the signals that direct the heart to do its pumping. Other circumstances, like severe accidents, also stop blood flow. But whatever the reason, once blood stops bringing its life-giving oxygen to the body's billions of cells the building blocks that make up the human body the death of those cells starts to occur. When the brain, which is the body's command center, goes without oxygen for about 15 minutes, all cells there die. While machines can help our lungs breathe or our hearts pump blood, no machine can assume the complex functions of the brain. Without a brain, we cannot live. Soon after a person dies, 
an official document called a death certificate is filled out and later filed as a record with the local government. It includes such information as time, place, and cause of death. What is a tornado? A tornado is a dark, funnel-shaped column of violently twisting air that extends down from a cumulonimbus, or thunderstorm, cloud. It is usually accompanied by thunder, lightning, and heavy rain. Unlike ocean-generated tropical storms and hurricanes, tornadoes begin over land and occur when low, moist. Warm winds blowing in one direction meet cooler, higher, drier winds blowing in a different direction. The rotating winds of a tornado can reach up to 300 miles, 483 kilometers per hour and if it extends close enough to earth it can destroy anything in its path. While most tornadoes only travel along the ground for a few minutes and a few miles. Leaving narrow paths of destruction, others have been known to last for hours. Touching down many times and leaving behind hundreds of miles of damage. Despite their small size and short duration. Tornadoes do more complete damage than any other kind of weather disaster. Which spiders are poisonous to people? Most spiders are capable of injecting venom into the animals they bite. But only a few can cause harm to humans. Two spiders most often associated with harmful bites are the black widow and the brown recluse. The black widow can be found all over the world, including throughout the United States, except Alaska. Females are far more common than males, the male usually gets eaten by the female after mating. Their shiny black bodies have red markings on the underside that are frequently in the shape of an hourglass. Black widows feed on insects, but they will occasionally if they feel threatened bite a human. A bite from a black widow while it can cause a person severe pain and nausea. Is not generally life-threatening. The brown recluse spider can most commonly be found in the southern and western United States. But it can also be seen in the northern states. A bite from this small spider may not be immediately detected. But after a few hours a painful blister may form. The wound can take several weeks to heal. In very rare cases, the bites of brown recluse spiders have been known to cause death in humans. These shy spiders are not aggressive and generally only bite when they are disturbed or handled. The funnel weaver spider found in southeastern Australia and certain kinds of tarantulas that live in Africa and South America have also been known to cause harm to humans. The Brazilian huntsman is believed to be the spider with the most toxic poison it would take only 0.0000021 ounces. 0.006 milligrams of this spider's venom to kill a mouse. If a spider bite occurs, the best thing to do is to try to collect the 
spider so it can be identified and to see a doctor as soon as possible. Most spider bites are harmless, though mildly annoying. How do snakes make venom? Snakes make venom in glands like those used for making saliva. These glands are located at the back of the snake's head. And the venom travels through ducts, or tubes, to the fangs. Different kinds of venom damage different parts of the snake's prey, some venoms affect the heart. Some attack the nervous system, and some work to digest the prey, making it easier for the snake to swallow it. How is an alligator different from a crocodile? Alligators and crocodiles share many similarities and are close relatives. Both belonging to the order Crocodilia. Some distinguishing features can help in telling them apart, however. Alligators usually have broader, flatter, rounder snouts than crocodiles. Crocodile snouts are narrow and V-shaped. Both have extremely powerful jaws, but the wider jaw of the alligator has the edge. Another difference can be seen in the way their jaws fit together. In alligators, the upper jaw is wider than the lower jaw, so when their mouths are closed, the upper teeth can be seen outside the mouth, while the lower teeth are almost completely hidden. Crocodiles' upper and lower jaws are about the same width. So when their mouths are closed, their teeth, also visible outside the mouth, interlock. The crocodile's large fourth tooth on the bottom is especially noticeable. Both animals tend to prefer freshwater environments, but crocodiles have a higher tolerance for salt water than alligators because they have salt glands on their tongues that help them get rid of excess salt. Crocodile skin also looks different from alligator skin because crocodiles have small black specks all over their bodies. While alligators have them only around their jaws. These dots are special sensory pits that help the animals. Detect the presence of prey and sense changes in water pressure. Crocodiles are thought to be more aggressive than alligators, and while that is true for some species, there are several different kinds of both animals, and there are many behavioral differences among them. Why do some plants have thorns? Plants have no means of escaping from hungry animals, so they develop ways to defend themselves. Some plants have poisonous parts, while others have thorns and other. Sharp growths to defend against animals that would want to eat them. Animals that approach such a prickly plant are painfully snagged. Which discourages them from coming closer. Why does my stomach growl when I'm hungry?
your body changes food into substances it can use for energy. When your body is low on food, it cannot make the energy it needs. Your brain and nervous system go into action then. Making the muscles of your stomach walls squeeze together in order to digest food food that isn't there. The actions of your stomach make you feel hungry. Ensuring that you will seek out some food to eat that will soon be on its way to your stomach. In the meantime, though. Gases and digestive juices in your empty stomach churn around, and you may hear growls. Scientists have a name for the rumblings in the digestive system that are caused by moving gas. Borborygmi, pronounced borborygmi, a word that sounds a lot like the noises your stomach makes when it's empty. How can a microwave oven cook food so fast? Unlike other ovens, which cook food with heat waves made from burning gas or electric currents. Microwave ovens use special bands of electromagnetic energy called microwaves, similar to light waves, to cook food. While heat waves gradually work their way inside food to cook it. Microwaves can travel right through food in an instant. In a microwave oven a device called a magnetron produces a beam of microwaves that pass through a spinning fan. Which sends the waves bouncing in all directions. As they travel through food their energy is absorbed by molecules of water. The water molecules vibrate at the same high speed as the microwaves. 2.45 billion times per second, and rub against other molecules. All this movement and friction causes a great deal of heat, cooking the food inside and out. Microwaved food is cooked through a process similar to steaming, which explains why it doesn't turn brown. But some microwave ovens have traditional heating elements to make food. Look more appealing giving it the outer color that we expect in cooked food. Certain materials allow microwaves to pass through, meaning they aren't heated by the waves. While other materials absorb the waves and still others reflect them, or bounce them back. For this reason it is important to be careful about the containers and coverings we use in microwave ovens. Microwaves pass through glass and plastic wrap, for example. Which are safe to use, as are paper products and most sturdy plastics. But metal containers and coverings like aluminum foil are reflective. Such surfaces keep food from absorbing microwaves. Allowing the waves to bounce around so much inside an oven that it may break. How does a toaster work? Inside a toaster are thick wires arranged in panels that heat up and toast your food. When you push down the lever that lowers your bread, it catches on a hook inside, turning on the heater. While your bread turns brown and crispy. A special metal switch inside the toaster gets hot, too, and bends. After a certain amount of time it bends so much that it pushes on. A bar that releases the lever from the hook 
and the toasting stops. This action also releases a spring, which pushes the lever up again and your toast pops up. All metals expand when they are heated. Why do people say that they feel like they have butterflies in their stomachs then? That's just a phrase that describes the fluttery feeling like the beating of delicate butterfly wings that some people get in their stomachs when they're nervous or excited. Why do I have to take a bath or shower? Taking a bath or shower does a number of things. It removes some of the germs that your body comes in contact with throughout the day. Germs that come from the air you pass through and from the objects, animals, and people you touch. A good washing of the skin also removes some of the dead cells that makes up its surface. Allowing newer cells to take their place. Washing removes odors that may be caused by sweating, along with water and salt. Perspiration contains waste products from body processes. Certain sweat glands called apocrines release a kind of sweat that can become particularly strong smelling. Today we also wash to look good washing with soap and water is the best way to avoid oily. Dirty skin and hair, and it's generally agreed that those are things we want to avoid. But that wasn't always what people thought. Over the centuries, different people in various parts of the world have done crazy things in the name of personal cleanliness and beauty. A few thousand years ago, for instance, People in Europe washed themselves with mud, scraping it off with an iron tool. They then rubbed oil on themselves because oily skin was considered attractive. And long ago the Gauls of what is now southern France tried to make themselves more appealing by stiffening their hair with a mixture of fat and ash. Unexpectedly, they found that when combined with water their hair mixture made a good soap. How fast does hair grow? Human head hair grows about 6 inches, 15 centimeters, every year. During the summertime it grows a little faster. Because warm weather causes more blood to reach the scalp, which gives hair cells extra nourishment. In cold weather, less blood travels to the surface of the body to skin and hair. Cells because it is more important that the internal organs that run the body are kept warm. What is addiction? In many cases, substance abuse leads to addiction. Which means the person taking the drug is dependent on it to feel pleasure or to not get sick. There are two different types of addiction. One type is called psychological addiction. 
which means the person taking the drug gets hooked on the pleasurable feelings associated with that drug. A physical addiction, on the other hand, means that the person has built up a tolerance to the effects of the drug. Requiring more of the drug more often to achieve the same high. Eventually the addicted person must take massive quantities of certain drugs to feel anything from it at all. And those quantities can sometimes reach deadly proportions. If an addicted person stops taking the drug, he or she will go through what is called withdrawal. That means the body has adjusted so much to having the drug in the system that the person feels sick without it. Withdrawal symptoms include fever, restlessness, vomiting, diarrhea, and severe dehydration. Some drugs are more addictive, or habit-forming, than others. Cigarettes, for example, contain nicotine, which is a highly addictive drug. Many cigarette smokers have a desire to quit but have a very difficult time doing so. Why do teeth fall out? Normally, only baby teeth fall out. And they do so when permanent teeth push up from below to take their place. As the permanent teeth push up, they destroy the roots, which are buried in the gums, of baby teeth. Without roots to anchor them to the jawbone, teeth become loose and fall out. Permanent teeth can fall out, too, when disease or injury destroys their roots. Why is it so noisy in big cities? Big cities are so noisy because a lot of people and activities are confined to a relatively small space. Think about the activities that happen in a small neighborhood people talking. Car motors running, ambulance sirens blaring and multiply that several times over. Because cities are usually centers of manufacturing, business, government and culture, they attract large numbers of people who live and work there. Cities are also home to lots of cars and mass transportation vehicles like buses and trains. All of which produce tremendous noise. And noises in a city often seem louder because the sound. Waves bounce back and forth between the many tall buildings. Why is cloning so controversial? The possibility of cloning human beings arouses curiosity and excitement in some people and deep suspicion and fear in others. Scientists and doctors have long intervened in the creation of new life such as using various fertility treatments to help people have babies who otherwise couldn't. But these techniques require doctors to assist in the process that happens in nature the merging of a sperm cell from a man's body with an egg from a woman's body. Cloning bypasses that process altogether. Using one person's cells to create a new human being that will be identical to that person. 
that level of scientific involvement in the creation of human life makes many people uncomfortable. Supporters of cloning technology argue that there are numerous benefits to human cloning. Many scientists believe that cloning can lead to important breakthroughs for people with incurable diseases. This type of activity, called therapeutic cloning, has as its goal the creation of certain kinds of cells rather than the duplication of a complete person. In such experiments, a human embryo, the group of cells that, if implanted into a uterus, would grow into a baby, would be produced through cloning so that the embryo stem cells Special cells that can develop into many different kinds of cells and tissue, can be extracted, destroying the embryo in the process. Stem cells can then be used to grow new tissue to replace a sick person's damaged organs or to cure diseases that otherwise would be fatal. Some scientists wish to pursue cloning technology to create babies for people who are unable to have children. And who wish to produce a child that shares their genetic makeup rather than adopting a baby. Many people have deeply felt concerns about cloning, particularly human cloning. They fear that this relatively new science is still too risky and unpredictable. Experiments with cloning a human might result in serious defects or health problems for the cloned subjects. Even Ian Wilmood, the scientist who led the team that produced the cloned sheep dolly, has strongly objected to experimenting with human cloning before further research is done. Many people object to cloning on religious grounds, arguing that life is sacred and only God not scientists and doctors can create new life. Others worry that the ability to clone a person might be abused by some who would spend a great deal of money to create a genetically perfect child, selecting certain traits and discarding others. Many people are disturbed by the thought that some people might use Cloning technology to replace a loved one who had died. Canadian.